Hello and welcome to this video in which we will be implementing the absolutely simplest neural network example. Um, the implementation will be done in Python using TensorFlow and I'm showing you all this code in Jupyter Notebooks. So all of this code could just as well be put into a file and run using your Python interpreter, just in case you're wondering. All right, let's get started. So the first order of business into, is to import your libraries. Uh, TensorFlow uses the NumPy array uh, quite heavily, so we will need that. So we say import NumPy as NP. So from now on we can refer to uh, the NumPy library uh, using NP. Similarly, we import TensorFlow, which is Google's deep learning platform and has implementations for neural network layers and uh, optimizers and, and so on and so forth. It's a very rich library. The implementation of our neural network is going to live in a special function called the model function. Uh, the signature of this function needs to be uh, as, as is depicted exactly, uh, and the parameter na names have to be the same. The, the function name can be different from what I have right, right now. But you have to have features, labels, and mode. Features is basically the input, and labels is the output, the desired output, that is. And mode is one of train, evaluate, or predict. So there are three possible modes. The implementation of our network is simply these two lines. Uh, we take the features and reshape them into the appropriate shape. Now, you have to understand TensorFlow uh, likes the data to be input in terms of batches. And since we only have one number that we're inputting, that implies one batch with one number. So that's what we're saying. In another example, in another application, you might have something like images that are input into a neural network. And that could look something like this. You have the number of batches, let's say you have 10 images per batch. You have the height of the image, the width of the image, and the number of channels for RGB, for example. Now this, this could be um, an input to a neural network, very common. Uh, in our case, though, uh, we only need one dimensional data as the input, because it's just one floating point number that we're inputting. <clears throat> the connection between the two layers and the output layer is defined by this next line. We're using the dense uh, layer type, um, and what that basically means is a fully connected layer. Of course, in our case, we only have one node, and we have a single value, so there's only going to be one weight as well, or one connection. Uh, important to note, uh, bias is by default true. So by default, there would be a bias unit. If you don't know what a bias unit is, you can Google that. Um, but we don't have that bias unit in this example neural network because we wanted to keep it as simple as possible. Similarly, we take the, uh, the labels or the desired output and we reshape it to fit the same format. So everything inside the model function is going to be batches and float values. Uh, this looks familiar. Uh, we used the mean squared error as the loss function, and we continue to use that here. We simply feed it two parameters, labels equals L, which is our reshaped labels. And as predictions, we provide the activations, the output activations of our neural network. <clears throat> now, instead of doing the training by hand, we use the gradient descent optimizer, which is uh, from the TensorFlow APIs. And in particular, we use the minimize function. We specify the learning rate to be 0 0.1. Uh, if you remember, that's what we used. And we give it the loss function. So this object will be fed to it. And then we're ready to provide or, or return the estimator spec, 
which is what the model function is supposed to do. Um, th this describes the model and how you're supposed to train it. Now this is in the training mode and we'll look at the predict mode later on in this video. <clears throat> now there's uh, one more little detail that um, I didn't mention here, which is that the weights are randomized, but if we want uh, the weights to actually be um, what we had in the video, then you would have to add a kernel initializer. Uh, so an initializer is an object that will initialize the weights for this layer. And we're going to use a tf constant underscore initializer with the value 0 0.8. If you remember, that was the weight that we had initially. <clears throat> and uh, again, uh, we create the estimator spec with the mode, uh, with the loss function and the train operation uh, that we have here. Uh, one more note about that. Um, this minimize function will eventually uh, calculate the gradients because it has the loss function and the loss function has the, the desired outputs and the actual output so it's able to uh, calculate loss but then it's also able to back propagate uh, because it has a reference to A which is this uh, last layer and that has a reference to whatever layers precede it so that's how back propagation happens in, in terms of the, the program code, the references. All right, so now we've defined the model function uh, and we are ready to create our estimator uh, object here. We provide the model function as a parameter and we specify a model directory. So this is a directory with, that will live on your file system where all of the weights and so on will be stored as the training happens. So there we go, now we have the estimator, which can be used to both train and predict. Uh, before we can train, we have to define the inputs. And there are a number of ways of doing that. Um, TensorFlow has a number of built-in um, input functions, but I wanted to use my own in this case because it's very easy. Uh, so if you remember, we had the input 1.5 and the desired output 0 0.5. These need to be packaged as NumPy arrays. And just in case, I've also specified the type, which is float32. So now we have these two arrays, um, arrays with one value, uh, for train inputs and train labels. And we define a function uh, for providing that training data, which consists of the inputs and the desired outputs. So there you go. And now we are ready to train. So this estimator guy already has the model all loaded up and ready to go because we provided it in the model function. Now we're uh, providing the train input and we're saying train for one step and let's see what happens. So there you go. Uh, you can see that the, the loss for the final step is 0 0.49, so it's pretty high. We're, we're still, the, the weight is still uh, pretty far away from what we wanted it to be, right? And we can also look at the values uh, in the model. So you can say estimator.get variable names, and it's going to say, there's one kernel, and then there's the global step, which is just basically saying, you know, how many steps we've we've trained. Um, and if you had more layers, if you had more nodes and connections between those, you would have more than just one kernel in there. And uh, let's look at the weight value. The weight value is 0 0.59, and this might sound familiar. Uh, after the first training step, we went from 0 0.8 to 0 0.59. So everything seems to be working just like in our um, slides 
in the previous video. By the way, I actually implemented that uh, neural network using Google Spreadsheets, just so you know. So I've never done this before in TensorFlow. All right, we can continue training. Um, one more step, and our weight goes down to 0 0.49, and so on. Let's put 10 steps and get over all of these hurdles, and we go down to a very small number, 9.5 times 10 to the power of minus 7. So we're almost there. And you can see that the weight is already converging towards 0 0.333, which is what we would expect. So now the model is trained. That's great, right? Now, <clears throat> of course, now that the model is trained and you want to build your web service or your mobile application or something that uses the model, uh, taking the input that the user gives and providing the correct output, um, although our case is a bit naive, but uh, in principle, uh, you would uh, want to call predict on the estimator object. Now this is a little bit uh, trickier. Um, <clears throat> first of all, let me just show you how to call predict first of all. You, you would create an input uh, function. Uh, for example, using TensorFlow's built-in NumPy input fn, where you give your data, which in this case is 1.5. But this could be any number, of course. And then uh, you say shuffle equals false, so you don't shuffle the values around. Of course, now we only have one value, so you can't. And the number of epochs, which is, by the way, not relevant to predictions. Um, but anyway, that's how uh, you could do it, for example. And then you can say estimator.predict input fn equals test input fn and you would you would run it and and do something with the output but bef before we can do that uh, in the model function remember we had the mode and unfortunately right now we don't have any way of dealing with other modes than train we just implicitly expect it to be train right so Let's add some code here to do the predictions. <clears throat> um, like this. So if mode equals tf.estimator.modekeys.predict, then we return an estimator spec, as we are expected to, um, that only has the predictions specified. So previously, we specified the train operation. Now we're specifying the predictions. Um, if we were to do evaluation, we would have to provide predictions and I believe the loss or the labels. <clears throat> anyway, I digress. But now with this model function, we are ready uh, to do predictions. Now let's try that right now. Um, so we're providing that value 1.5. And I don't know if I should bore you with these details, but the evaluation result is a generator. So that's Python's way of doing a lazy computation. Um, and you have to actually evaluate the, the values. Uh, you can do that using a list, which will then uh, return an array of results, execution results. And then you can take one of them, in this case the only one of them, and that will actually be a NumPy array uh, which contains our value. So let's run it. There we go. So with this input 1.5, the output is 0 0.5. So that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I provided it for completeness sake. Um, and I will provide the code in a link below. Thanks for watching.